while we're still standing, let's read together Psalms 121. So good for us to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We need to know where we should take our eyes right now. Amen. I don't know what your day has been like, but we thank God that we have a God that we can look to, an all-sufficient God. Let's read together. I will lift my eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never sleep or sleep. The Lord is the keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful promise. Amen. Let's just lift our voice and give God the thanks and praise that he deserves. Come on, let's just thank him for all that he's done, all that he's about to do. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father for bringing your servants safely from Israel to be with us tonight. Thank you, Father God. We're reminded you're you're the God that never slumbers nor sleeps. Thank you for what you have for us tonight, Lord God. Thank you that, Lord, from a distance we could pray and pray for them. And now, Lord God, you've brought them right near to us, oh Lord God. Lord, we thank you because you're blessed. They're going out, they're coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's prepare our hearts just to thank Him for what we can receive today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the person, oh Lord God, that's standing on either side of us tonight. Thank you that, Lord, we're in a place where two or three can agree. And anything we agree on, Lord, we know we have it, Father. You're worthy to be praised, oh Lord. You're worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And so, Lord, we commend ourselves to your word and to your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for drawing us tonight. Thank you for giving us safe travel. Thank you for those who are coming, Lord, that are coming from work still. And those that are coming from other places, Lord, we just want to thank and praise you. So we commend ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you sit down, greet someone else and say, it's good to see you tonight. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. And we thank God that uh, those of you who are familiar with the the speaker's face that you're going to see tonight, but now you see him in person. Amen. And we want to thank God for bringing Israel all the way from Israel. (laughs) And we've got a double portion. We thank God for Ethan that's come also uh, stand up so they can see you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and I'm sure that Brother Israel will tell us more about their association, their work together. We're so grateful to God uh, that he's made, made this provision. You can't hear? Okay. Can we have a little bit more? Okay. Can you hear me now? All right, good. So, without taking any, any more time, we thank God for the praise team. Amen. Is that wonderful? Yeah, amen. But we want to hear and receive all that God has for us. And uh, I want to commend you. Our service is normally at 8 o'clock, but you got here early for 7.30. Amen. So you can get the double portion. So let's stand to our feet and welcome uh, Israel Pochter, Pastor Israel Pochter, as he comes to share what God has for us tonight. Right? Um, uh, Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. 
uh, and uh, let's pray. You know, uh, right now I feel like I have lots to say because we live in the very special times. Lots of going on uh, uh, physically, practically, but also in the spiritual realm. And you know, when you have too much to say, you don't know what to start with. <laughs> so let's just pray that the Holy Spirit will move and uh, speak to us. And um, well, I, uh, in home, I speak three languages daily, and English is my third language. If I go too fast and I have my accent and mistakes, uh, just raise your hand and I will know you. Like, slow down, slow down, okay? Anyway, Lord, thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence, time in the Holy Spirit, time with the worship Yeshua. And we pray tonight, Lord, that you will release your blessing. You will speak to our hearts, Yeshua. Speak, Lord, beyond the words, Lord. And I really, uh, really felt and prayed before the service, Lord. Just move with the power of the Holy Spirit tonight, Lord. And uh, just show us visions, Lord. And dreams tonight, Yeshua. Just speak to us about eternity, Lord. About spiritual life. And about spiritual realm. What's taking place right now. Because... There is really acceleration of uh, demonic powers, but also of God's glory. So, Lord, help us to see and understand, Lord. What shall we do in all of this craziness and darkness and glory? Hallelujah, Lord. So we pray that you will just, just move among us, Lord. Among in us, move in us, Lord. Change us, Yeshua. Touch us, Yeshua. In the name of Jesus. B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, it's wonderful to be together and worship together, especially to be here. Uh, you know, with Pastor Dennis, we know each other for many years, and uh, we're still waiting for him in our church, right? Not only in Israel, but in our church, and here am I. Praise God. It's wonderful. You know, sometimes God really do deep heart connections, and you know, it's like for life, uh, the, the kingdom connections, the divine appointments. So that's what we feel with your pastor and, uh, you know, your church. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to share about Israel. I know it's a prayer meeting, so differently we will speak about prayer points, how to pray for Israel, what's going on, uh, because there is lots of concern in the spirit, but also a really a deep, deep revelation and understanding that it's historical and strategic times. And, you know, nothing happens in the earth, uh, including bad stuff, including all the darkness, without God uh, letting certain things to be released and to, expo to be exposed. And, and, you know, and many things, you probably you know about spiritual warfare, you know about demonic stuff, you know. Many times things are happening and we don't see them. And that's, that's actually more difficult. But time to time, God just letting things go out, you know, and then you see. Uh, so uh, since October 7, uh, you know, world have changed. You know, we have certain points in the history when uh, certain events, sometimes even far away from England, far away from you, sorry, uh, <laughs> or praise the Lord, <laughs> but uh, certain things are happening and they are unlocking certain spiritual dynamics and uh, waves of these events shaking the earth. And we have many, many promises in the word of God and, and Book of Revelations, Book of Daniel, Old Testament prophecies, many uh, prophecies that God is going to shake all the nations. He's going to shake all the earth, all the big empires and small nations. He's going to shake everything. Like Abba Habakkuk says, he's going to shake everything that can be shaken, that unshakable kingdom of God will be revealed and his glory and power will come down even in the bigger ways. Praise the Lord. Right now, we see shaking, right? We see, we see riots. We see craziness. <clears throat> and, and many times, when you see irrational things, it's a sign. It's a spiritual warfare. It's a spiritual battle. It's not physical. It's a spiritual. And as Christians, we all know Ephesians 6, when it says our fight or our war, in Hebrew, it says, our war, not against flesh and blood. It's not people. It's not about people. It's about kingdom of God and kingdom of darkness. It's a spiritual warfare. And, you know, I'm so glad to speak, actually, at the prayer meeting, not the normal church service where there's many new people, you know, like and all kind of people. But as I, I, I have freedom to speak 
uh, deeper and more uh, like spiritual language, right? To use spiritual vocabulary, spiritual language, the demonic, the, the kingdom and such. Praise God. It's, it's a joy because we need to do lots of work of prayer and we're going to speak about that. But, you know, what happened in Israel, it's actually uh, affecting all the nations, all the nations, all people, all the nations, all churches. You like it or not, do you agree with that or not? It's that what happened, and it's what written in the Bible. And I know you know that. It's just, just, just sometimes you speak to different people. People have different ideas. But literally, what happened in Israel is touching nations and affect nations. So as people of God and spiritual people, we would better uh, take time to understand and pray and to, uh, to seek the Lord and understand what really happened to be prepared for what's going to come. Praise God. And praise the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, I learned in my life a few powerful lessons. For example, when God called me from Tel Aviv to Ashdod, when I'm pastor in church, it's a city of Ashdod. When God called me, he showed me glorious vision. And I saw like years ahead of time, decades ahead of time, what's going to happen with my city. And praise the Lord, he showed me only the final you know, point, all the great stuff, the, the beautiful picture and I was so excited. I was screaming, shouting, hallelujah. I had open vision, and I saw thousands of Israelis worshiping Jesus in the city of Ashdod, and I heard the ultimate voice of God, <clears throat> leave everything behind in Tel Aviv, move to Ashdod, and start this church. <clears throat> Can you imagine? I was so excited. God spoke to me. I saw the future of Ashdod, hallelujah. I was running like crazy, telling to everyone. But what God didn't show me, all the battles in the process, <laughs> all the persecutions I'm going to face, all the, you know, all the doubts, all the pressure, all the craziness I'm going to face. And today I say, praise God. Praise the Lord. Sometimes better not to know all the battles in the process, right? Just like, you know, like Joseph. I think if, if, he, have, have, if he would see not only the final vision, but all the jail, all the betrayals, all the slavery, all brothers almost killed him, you know, if he would see all of that, probably he would say, thank you, God. No, no, not me, not me, Lord. Uh, but the vision helped him to get, get through, right? So uh, same with us. You know, when, God, when God called me, I didn't know what I'm going to face. Uh, and uh, in the process, I felt that kind of Holy Spirit spoke to me, get ready. You're going to face serious persecutions. Uh, and, and we had. We had seven years of very severe persecutions when thousands of rabbis would come to my church uh, promising to close us down, you know. And, you know, Israel is a free country, but when you live uh, or you're moving from mixed cities of Arabs and Jews and Christians and Muslims, you know, the tolerance is much higher, you know, we live together. And then you move into Jewish-only city, run, runs by rabbis only. 400 synagogues, and you start in first Hebrew-speaking church. Surely you will have persecutions. What I've been thinking, you know. <laughs> but praise God. God has been faithful. Lots of miracles took place. And all these battles eventually turned to glory of God. And we have seen amazing victory and revival. And lots, lots of evangelism. Not only in the city, but also out of city. And Pastor Dan has been, been part of it. You know, like with, with our friend David and many other stuff. So praise God. God is good. God is faithful. So if you have a wonderful, great vision... I want to just remind you, don't be, don't be confused when persecutions will come. Don't be confused when attacks will come. And don't cry, why, Lord? Why, Jesus? You know, I know, like, I'm I talking a lot to young generation. I know you kind of older guys, you, you've been through a lot. And you're ready, right? You, you, you're ready. More or less, more or less. The young generation, look, as people say, why, God? Anything happened? Why, God? You know, I've been learned... Not to say, why God, but to say, Lord, Lord, so what to do? Okay, so what next? What shall I do in all of that, right? And I mean, why is okay, but you know, why of complain is not really. The <laughs> like, uh, like if you ask, Lord, please explain me what happened, that's okay. But all this complaint, why God, why me, why? poor me, you know. Uh, so, but we live in a very special times. In very, very special times. Historical days, historical times, and you will see that, you will see that. You know, when... Corona, COVID hit, you know. A uh, few years after, we know it was historical times, right? And many things changed. And many things would never would be the same as it was 
pre before that. And there is many other events that actually shape in history of humanity, but also taken us one step closer to return of Jesus Christ. One step closer to Messiah, we call him Yeshua in Hebrew, right? Jesus is Yeshua in Hebrew. And literal translation of Yeshua is sa Savior. So actually in English it should be translated Savior, Messiah, Christ, right? Hallelujah. So his name is Savior, literally in Hebrew names. Not just meaning, not just explanation. In Hebrew, word Savior is Yeshua. And salvation is Yeshua. Same word, just one letter added at the end, hey, hey, at the end. So every time in the Old Testament you read about, and you will see salvation of the Lord, there is the name of Yeshua in this word, name of Jesus in this word, hallelujah. In every Old Testament scriptures, Psalms, when it says, and you will see salvation of God, it's Jesus of God, I know, Yeshua of God, hallelujah, praise God. Anyway, so, uh, you know, battle in Israel, the explosions and smoke going through the Europe and through the world. And by the way, you see all these crazy riots against Israel? You see all this craziness? In the Middle East, in the Middle East, there is no riots. There is no craziness. No one protesting. No, it's only here in Europe. And it's also very interesting. It's not rational, right? It doesn't make sense. It should be there first and then here because it's spiritual. When you see you know, LGBT communities lining together with radical Islamists, it's not rational, right? It's not rational. It's not supposed to be like that normally, you know? But when they line it together against Israel, welcome to the spiritual world. It's a reminder. That it's a spiritual battle. It's not just physical. It's a spiritual. But praise God, as Christians, we don't need to guess and be in the dark until God speaks. God already spoken. We have the Bible. And about events we're facing right now, we read in the Bible. Hallelujah. And I so love Bible. I so love all these Old Testament prophecies because right now you're reading these prophecies and you see fulfillment in our generation. Not 1,000 years ago, not 2,000 years ago. I mean, some of them took place 2,000 years ago, yes. But actually, we live in a generation when most of the Bible prophecies have been fulfilled. Hallelujah. It's amazing, but it's happening right now. So we do live in the days of the Bible because we, we see the prophecies coming to pass. You know, come to Israel, and by the way, you are welcome to come and visit us, and I want you to know, we say, in some places we say, mi casa, du casa, your house, my house, right? So uh, you are welcome to visit us and worship together with Israelis, Jewish and Arabs, and by the way, Jewish and Arabs, because we pray together, Inside of Israel, Jewish and Arabs, as brothers, we pray together all the time, we meet together, we serve God together, we, we, we bless each other, we, we, we are friends, we are family of God. Hallelujah. I know from outside it looks like, it can look different, but we are actually, my best friends are Arabs, Arab pastors. Those lead Arab-speaking churches in Nazareth, in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem, you know, some Palestinians, praise the Lord. And it's, it's wonderful to see what God is doing. And you know, you would never hear in your news Today is nice and sunny day. There is Arabs and Jewish people live together in peace. You know, there is, a, there is Muslims and Christians and, and Jewish, you know, work together in the hospitals. You would never hear such, such reports, right? But it's part of life in Israel. Part of life in Israel. If, when, you have, when you go to, people speak about apartheid, you go to any hospital in Jerusalem and you will hear, you will see, uh, depending on the population of the city, but you will see by 30% of doctors and, and nurses, they are Arabs. Muslims and Christians, and uh, about 70 in Jerusalem, 70% would be Jewish doctors. And they work together and, and they treat each other. Jewish doctors treat Arab, Muslim, do Muslim patients, and Muslim doctors treat Jewish patients. It's all mixed, we live together. And yes, there is Palestinian conflict, there is certain things uh, that have been created by people, and by demons for sure, by devil, uh, you know, to do certain work. And there is also purposes behind it. And there is a biblical explanation. And I know I cannot share everything in one night, but I believe it's the beginning and Holy Spirit will continue and your pastor will continue as well, I hope. <laughs> I know he will, praise the Lord. But um, uh, I want to start with a very interesting prophecy. <clears throat> Ezekiel 36. Because we live in the days when uh, 
There is many, many, many voices and lots, lots of confusion, lots of effect, and lots of disinformation. And by the way, in Israel, uh, if you want to really, really know what happened in Gaza, what happened in West Bank, what happened in Lebanon, talk to us, because right now we have 1,000 Christian soldiers in Israeli army, 1,000. We have Muslim divisions, Muslim battalions that join Israeli army, uh, the, the, the Muslims who live in Israel, because they understand what happened. They know what's going to happen and what could happen. And they actually, we have Arab-speaking Muslim divisions in Israeli army. I know no one would tell you that in, on your TV, but, but uh, that's, that's a fact. And we have 1,000 Christian soldiers who are see with their own eyes uh, what really happened there, all the darkness, all the evil, all the terror, all the poor civilians uh, using as a living shield, you know, has, as terrorists don't care about their own people, even their own children. It's crazy, it's dark, it's demonic. And we pray for revival in Gaza. And by the way, I live pretty close to Gaza. We pray for revival. I remember standing on the border of Gaza, and we used to go there pretty often with a, with a uh, Muslim brother who get born again, get to know Jesus, uh, left Gaza, escaped from Gaza. And uh, we've been standing together and praying for God, Gaza. And uh, he told all the stories, how difficult it is. And I remember asking him, what do you th so what do you think? As Azatian, we say Azatian in, 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 in Arabic, in Hebrew, as a man of Gaza who born and raised in Gaza, what do you think? What can change the situation? And he said, clearly, he said, there is no political solutions, there is no economical solutions, there is only spiritual solution, only spiritual. And he said, uh, I mean, we can say that uh, as Christians easily, but in this case, People try, nations, Israel, the politicians, they try all of that and nothing works. Then you know, then you know. <laughs> the solution only, Jesus, Jesus. So please, when you pray next time for Israel, pray for also Muslims in Israel, pray for Palestinians in Israel, and pray for Gaza. Because interesting thing about Gaza, we say in English Gaza, in Hebrew it's Aza. Okay, with the strong A, ah, like Aza. So the Aza in Hebrew means stronghold. Interesting, right? Stronghold. Interesting. So there is a spiritual connection. And uh, Hamas in Hebrew, I know Hamas, uh, there, is letter, there is words behind it, but first letter of each word becoming Hamas. But Hamas in Hebrew, in Old Testament, in the Hebrew Bible, when God speaks about uh, about uh, darkness and evil, this is Hamas. It's, it's kind of co coincidence, but probably prophetic coincidence, right? It's interesting. But anyway, anyway, uh, I remember sitting with uh, Tess uh, Sada, who born and raised in Gaza, uh, joined Yasser Arafat. He was a sniper for Yasser Arafat and used to kill Christians. That's his confession, you know. But then he ran for his life, eventually get saved and become revangelist. And even Israel noticed the change in his life and invited him as honorable guest to, and offer him, if you want to work with the Palestinians anywhere, we will help you because these guys need light. They need, they need to hear your stories and all their stories of for hope for peace, you know, for shalom, for changes from terrorist and sniper to evangelist. What a change, right? What a change. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, anyway, I remember when he was kicked out of Gaza, he came back to Gaza as an evangelist, but he was kicked out for, for preaching the gospel, even though he did very wisely, did it very gently. I remember him crying and saying, uh, he was crying, literally broke out in Jerusalem in prayer meeting with pastors. And he said, you know, you know, friends, I feel like Satan building his throne in Gaza. It was about 10 years ago. Uh, it's interesting, right? But we read the book of Revelation, and we read about cities, two cities in Old Testament, uh, sorry, New Testament, and Book of Revelation, when Jesus himself said, in this city, throne of Satan is built, right? There is throne of Satan in this city. What happened later? What happened later? Christians overcome all of that, and then these cities become Christian cities. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid when you hear about throne of Satan. It's a good, it's a, it's a challenge. Yeah, there is darkness. But also, it's a challenge for us to pray and to see kingdom changes. Amen. Hallelujah. Because can you imagine if people of Gaza will lay down their weapons and say, and say, let's live in peace. The prosperity will come next day. And billions will come next day. They come in anyway, but 
billions of, of come on next day. And uh, actually, Israel has a plan to turn Gaza into Singapore of the Middle East. Uh, but with terror, it's not possible, of course. There have to be changes. And, uh, and uh, there is, I mean, things are ready. And we don't know if it will happen or not. Uh, but when we pray, miracles taking place, right? And I know lots, lots of Arabs who are ready to go to Gaza and preach the gospel, to come with help, with humanitarian, but also preach the gospel if doors will be open. Because right now, I mean, all the way before the war, missionaries were not, were not allowed to step into Gaza, not allowed to preach the gospel, and darkness were growing from year to year. But now with all the shaking and bloodshed and, 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 and death, you know, all of destruction, uh, we're all very sorry about that. It's difficult to see that. It's really, really very bad. And I know Israel, in many ways, have no choice and try to do their best, but it's really bad. But shaking in can open door for hope. Shaking can open door for gospel, for gospel, for Bible. And I remember speaking with uh, my brother Salim, uh, Arab pastor. I, I also asked him the same question. What can change situation in Gaza? And he said, change the book. <laughs> you know, Christians in Israel, they're very straightforward. I mean, Arab Christians. Change the book, meaning bring the Bible and changes will come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So uh, that's our prayers. But let's read Ezekiel 36. You know, it, I'm not going to read all the chapter. It's a very interesting chapter. But all this chapter given to, to Israel powerful, powerful promises about last days. What God is going to do with Israel in the last days. And this prophecy actually fulfilling right now in many ways and in many, in many levels it's already been fulfilled and fulfilling, coming to fullness, praise the Lord. And God given, uh, I'm not going to read all chapter, when you get home, read all chapter, beautiful chapter, but God given great promises about prosperity, about blessing, how we're going to turn desert and desolated area to the, uh, to the uh, Garden of Eden, you know, to all this agricultural area. The desert will become agricultural and this powerful scriptures, powerful prophecy with all the details of the Bible. In the Bible, all the details about multiplication, about blessing. And God even speaks, speak to the trees, speak to the valleys, speak to the hills, tell them to produce their fruits because my people are coming. Beautiful, beautiful prophecies. But then, uh, given all these beautiful prophecies, God turned around to Israel. And he speaks in, to Israel. And that's a very important point, very good point. Verse 20 says, When they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name when they said, said of them. Those are the people of the Lord, and yet they have gone out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations wherever they went. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, and that's a key scripture, Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations when, wherever you went. And then he continued to speak again, blessings and prosperity and protection and, and on and on and on. So what does it mean for us? Actually, God's speaking here and is saying to us what he is going to do with Israel. It's not for the sake of Israel, and it's not about Israel. What is doing with Israel, and in, in saying that, you know, if, you, if I will summarize all this, the prophecies that kind of uh, given the same message, I can tell you, God is speaking to people of Israel, and he said, you broke my covenants. You didn't keep my commandment, commandments. You have received a lot, but you broke it, you lost it, lost it you blew it. And he's speaking condemnation, condemnation of Israel. And bottom line, you don't deserve it. You're not worthy. But, God is saying, because of the God's promises and God's covenants, because of his faithfulness, he's saying here, I'm still going to do all these great things, but not for your sake, remember. It's not for you. And actually what he's saying here, you're not better than others. Yes, you are chosen, but now through Jesus we're all chosen. You know, the Israel is not better than others, not wiser than others. I know there's perceptions. You know, I had conversations with some businessmen, and some people think all the Israelis are great business, businessmen. They're not. 
And by the way, I live in Israel. We have brilliant people, wise people, all these doctors, professors, technology, and all these wonderful statistics. But also we have stupid people, sorry. <laughs> it's just a nation, you know, a normal nation. And yes, we see hand of the Lord of all this nation. There is great achievements. But also there's lots of stupidity because they are people. They're just people, flesh and blood. And without God, we're all nothing, right? All, nothing. all nations are like a sand. But because of God and his promises and his faithfulness, he's going to do whatever he promised. So all this history and story about Israel, all this restoration of Israel and all the blessings, it's not really about Israel. It's about God of Israel, God, because of God of Israel. And I don't need to tell you, you live in England, you see what happened around you, uh, not only concerning Israel, but just concerning changes in the society, all the craziness, uh, loss of directions. And, you know, today many people called darkness light and light darkness, right? They don't know who they are, boys and girls, and so much craziness around. So there is nations that, that are rising against God's order, against, against God's order. And they think this is freedom, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. But praise the Lord, we have Jesus we have Bible, we have strong foundation, we have his word, hallelujah, we have a very straight compass, and uh, we are solution of this world. And you know, we are, we are people, we are people, right? We all can do mistakes, and we're not perfect, and, but we serve perfect God. Amen. And he can take our imperfect lives and turn into a wonderful glory of God. And he's doing miracles and wonders, and he's using our prayers to Change the atmosphere, right? To release light. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's what we read in the Bible. It's not about Israel. And as well, it's not about us. Now I speak as Christian, right? About you who live in England. It's not about us. It's about us serving him. Living for him. Serving his purposes. Praise the Lord. And you know, uh, I remember when my son was uh, called to the army, he, he was preparing himself, reading different articles, how great is the Israeli army, the most effective army in the Middle East, all of that, and then he became a soldier. So one day he came home and he told me, Daddy, I'm not get it. I read all these achievements and statistics. They're great. But then I see my commanders, people around me. Come on, so many stupid decisions. So many things doesn't make sense. How can it work together? And I can tell you, if you, go, if you come to Israel, you will see there is a, land of, a hand of the Lord over nation. But then you come to people, and you will see all kind of problems you can find. Whatever problems you have here, you have there as well. Because it's not about people. It's about God who is working in us, through us, in our lives. And so same principles work for us. Praise the Lord. So I just want you to remember, you're going to hear more and more and more uh, different uh, bad reports about Israel, bad reports from Israel. So first of all, you have brothers, Christian brothers, born again, spirit-filled brothers, both Jewish and Arabs, and different Christians who uh, somehow live in Israel, uh, you know, and come to visit, check for yourself. You're going to hear lots, lots of, uh, you know, crazy reports, but remember, it's never about Israel, it's about God of Israel. And that's why nations will rise against Israel. It's in the Bible. They will rise against Israel. There will be different movements, and they're going to grow these movements. And now we just see what's written in the Bible. So that's okay. That's okay. You know, you know uh, for one side, I have my concerns. It doesn't look nice. Yeah, it looks ugly. It looks wrong. You know, like people literally call the terror good thing, you know, like, <laughs> and democracy bad thing, you know, Crazy, but it is what it is. But once again, it's a spiritual warfare. And my Bible said that Satan will try to deceive even chosen one, even Christians. I know young generation under very heavy attack, especially if they're in the colleges, universities, you know, they're, in, uh, they're a strong battle for next generation. And it's, it's, it's for a reason, for reasons. It's a very, very, very strong battle. And you, can see it on, you can see it on social media. There is a serious, strong ba battle against against uh, young people, but God is doing miracles, and, but they need our prayers. Next generation, young generation, they need our prayers. We need to pray for young generation. You know, we need to stand with them, you know, to empower them, 
to, I mean, to just to stand with them. And, uh, and it starts with Israel, the old attacks. It starts with Israel, and according to the Bible, then it will also turn around against Christians. You will see that. First, it's against Israel, and uh, then it will be against Christians as well. Anyway, so, but we have a power of Holy Spirit, power of God. And let me read the uh, book of Isaiah 60. Uh, God gave me this word, I mean, it's a Bible, but God gave me these words a few years ago, and everywhere I would go, I couldn't help, but I would start, always start preaching from that, and I want to uh, proclaim it here as well. And today I'm not going to use even New Testament scriptures because you know New Testament, right? So I'm going to Old Testament prophecies, uh, when, when prophets prophesied about our days and days to come, days to come. And I can tell you, we going forward toward the end days very quick. Very quick. I remember about uh, 10 years ago, I was at Kufai conference in, in the States, big conference, and uh, conference to support Israel, how to pray for Israel. And they invited an ex-general, ex-Israeli general. And it was right after uh, Lebanon war, when just Lebanon war over, second Lebanon war. Uh, and you know, he came there. He was surprised to see all these thousands of Christians waving Israeli flags. He was touched. But then also he grow and uh, his concern and his inside of him just grown and he's not a Christian guy, and he was speaking, uh, like speaking from the Bible, you know. And he said, uh, "Listen, I see your love and passion for Israel. All the songs about Israel, they're all good." But he said, "But I don't know how much do you know, uh, but I can tell you what I see as an Israeli, as I see what's going to happen." And he didn't, he never read New Testament. But he was like speaking from the book of Revelation, you know? And, and I will repeat what he said. And he said, you know, uh, next war with Lebanon will be actually war uh, from Lebanon, but really against Iran and other countries of this kind. But they just used their proxy, you know, then Leb Lebanon, one of them, <coughs> Lebanon, Syria, and then others. And they said, next war uh, will be different. And he said, right now people saying the, the, the Hezbollah, you know, the Iran, uh, smuggle their rockets you know, to, to Lebanon to attack Israel in the future. They're preparing for war. And I said, no, that's wrong. They're not smuggling. They just bring it in openly. They ship it in, you know, they ship it in. And I said, next war, they will be so much armed that when they will attack Israel in full scale, we will have 1,000 rockets a minute. And no iron dome will help. I mean, it will help in a certain extent, but uh, Israel will be under attack whenever have seen. And it's, uh, it's Russian rockets, it's very precise rockets, you know, it's, it's a very dangerous rockets, it's not like, like, uh, like Hamas shooting uh, much more simple weapons, you know. And he said, Israel will be in the point, they or us, who's going to go down? Like it will be, either Israel will be destroyed or Israel need to act uh, as never before. And he said, uh, can we destroy Hezbollah? Yes, we can. But I said, but in that case, when 1,000 rockets will fly every minute, he said, like, uh, and Israel will become, in many parts of Israel will become ruins, turn to ruins. And he said, what Israel can do, Israel will need to destroy uh, terrorists and to destroy them. It's not normal army. They hide in, among the civilians, cities, villages, you know. He said, Israel will need to use the probably nuclear or tactical nuclear weapons, like what Putin talking about right now. That was new term. Now it's become known, new, tactical nuclear, right? Just localized nuclear, not like Japan was attacked, but just more local. And he said, when Israel will uh, going to fall down, you know, it will be there or us. Of course, we will act. And but to stop terrorists, we will need to wipe out entire cities. And he said, what will be next? All the world, including the best allies and America and others will turn against Israel. Israel will be in isolations, in isolation, and then all the nations, surrounding nations will see it's a sign in time to attack. Israel will be weak, run out of weapons very quick. You know, it's a small country, very, very small country. And I listen to him, and I think like, that's like Book of Revelation, <laughs> right? That looks, that sounds like Book of Revelation, all the nations coming against Israel, and you know. But also there's a great message in the middle. When all the armies will come to surround Israel and attack Israel, Jesus will come down. I don't, I, I'm not touching when there's rapture and all of that, you know, like I'm not, it's not about that. But very interesting, right? So where are we at? Where are we at? Like when, when these prophecies can be fully fulfilled? 
all the book of Daniel, book of Isaiah, Zechariah. Actually, Zechariah speaks about these events as well. Book of Revelation. When is going to happen? I can tell you. Maybe we have 20, 30 years, maybe a little bit more, maybe 10, or this really thing I can just told you can happen in a year time. So I don't know exactly, no one knows our, but uh, I remember when I just got saved and I studied last days, we've been guessing, lots of guessing, right? It was not clear what going to happen. We've been guessing, maybe this will happen and that will happen and, and you know, it was all good. But right now, we can really see that. The politically, geopolitically, we can really see that. I can tell you, I mean, things can accelerate and probably in one year we, we will see end of the world and, but also it ended up with kingdom come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're that close, that close. It's interesting, right? And uh, surely we need to preach the gospel as never before. Praise God for last Saturday. Hallelujah. Surely we need to run with the gospel as part of the promises of God and the gospel spread and also in an amazing way because of internet and all, and all the social media. Gospel is spreading all over the world. And uh, you know, we're waiting for millions and millions to get saved. But yet Jesus still said that most of the people will want see salvation. We don't know who will be saved and who will not. So we need to preach the gospel for everyone. But he said... Not the majority will get saved, you know? So anyway, uh, let's read Isaiah 60. By the way, when Jesus said, when you're going to see all these events taking place, the wars and rumor of wars and epidemies and all the pandemic, when you're going to see all of that, remember what he said? In Luke, he said, raise your head. He didn't say, run to your bomb shelter. <laughs> <laughs> or go and hide somewhere there, you know, in the islands. It won't help anyway. He said, raise your head. Redemption is coming. For one side, he's given us a very, very serious report. And I remember my wife came, came to faith because he, some, some lady, co-worker, was reading for her the scriptures about last days. She gets scared. She gets really scared and get, give her life to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But anyway, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Raise your head. The difficult times are going to be also glorious times because it's leading to redemption, right? To restoration of his kingdom, of his glory. Hallelujah. And we think, when we think in flesh, oh man, it will be difficult. When we think in the spirit, through the Bible prophecies, it's going to be glorious. We're going to see biggest miracles, biggest you know, power of God, we're going to see his glory. Going through the nations and wiping out nations. Hallelujah. So Isaiah 60, when he saw last days, and it feels like Jesus were quoting, just giving more details to that prophecy. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of, of, your, of your rising. Praise the Lord. So what we have here, we see two reports. Good and bad, and then good again, right? So what is your culture here in England? If someone come to you and ask you, uh, I have two news for you, good and bad. What would you like to hear first? What is your culture? Good or bad? I see, I hear some people say bad, but most, mo most of you say good, right? Good? Okay. Well, you're not like in Israel. In Israel will say, okay, give me the bad news first. <laughs> Let's deal with the problems. And then hopefully some relief, right? Well, I, once I heard a British joke. Can I, can I tell a joke in the church? Can I? It's British, okay? That's yours. I don't know. Maybe an old one. Well, two patient, a patient in the hospital, and he had a trauma with his leg, and doctors fighting for his leg. Shall he, they cut off his leg and amputate or not? Can they save or not? And one morning, doctor came and said, I have two news for you, good and bad. What would you like to hear first? So he said, give me the bad one. He said, well, you're going to lose your leg. Sorry. Ooh. And what is good, in, good news? Your neighbor wants to buy your shoes. 
Sorry. <laughs> it's a British joke, you know? It was written British. <laughs> yeah. In some places, when I tell them this joke, they would go, like, ooh. <laughs> so you laugh. It, it feels like British, right? <laughs> anyway, good news. Arise, shine, for your light is, uh, has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful news, right? Time to rise. Time to shine. His glory is coming. But then it says, for behold, and let me explain this verse. For behold, get ready. Darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Okay? So that's a powerful message. Darkness is going to cover the earth. The deep, deep darkness. So we, hear, we read here about two kinds of darkness. Darkness and deep darkness. Well, Old Testament written in Hebrew. So in Hebrew, actually, here is two different words. One word is darkness is choshech. And what is choshech? Can you say it? T say it to your neighbor, please. Little Hebrew lesson. Choshech. It starts with strong, strong, like C-H. You know, choshech. <laughs> Great. You're not swearing. I promise you're not swearing. <laughs> Darkness. Yeah. So it, it helps in your prayer. When you pray, like, you know, <laughs> get out. <laughs> Darkness. Anyway, yeah, in English it sounds very soft, like darkness, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Choshech, it's one of the plagues over Egypt, the darkness. Do you remember when darkness came over Egypt? It wasn't just, just lack of light. It says in Egyptian houses were darkness, but they had lights, they had candles. It was tangible, physical darkness. And even having light inside, it, couldn't, it didn't help. It was dark. It's some, some supernatural, very heavy, tangible darkness, you know? Uh, so it's, it's very interesting, but how can you have such a darkness in your house if you have light, you know, if you have candles? So it's probably together with spiritual darkness, right? With demonic presence, I would, I, I would think, you know? Uh, so that was first one of the plagues, Choshech. So Bible used exactly the same word. First word, it says, Choshech, going to cover the nations. The darkness, the deep darkness going to cover the nations. And second word says here, deep darkness or gross darkness. The King James says gross darkness or deep darkness. What is deep darkness in Hebrew? It's a totally different word. It's actually not even darkness. It says arafel, arafel. And arafel means a fog, you know? Oh, you have fogs in English. In Israel, it's very rare. We almost don't have fog. But here, you have fog. I've been driving once in the fog. It was scary. You don't see nothing, right? The fog is just around, it's around you, and you don't see what's coming, what's going. You can, you can lose direction easy, right? You can lose direction, sleep over the, over the road. Arafel. So what is it? It's blindness. It's really blindness. And see what happened around us with the nations. The blindness. Spiritual blindness. People losing directions. They don't know where is north and where is south. Speaking of values, right? Spiritual values. They are lost. So Isaiah says there are going to be up or uprising of two kinds of darknesses, right? The demonic, heavy darkness, you know, the hatred, the bloodshed, destruction, the war, the hate, the crime, crime and all of that going to grow in the last days. The terror going to grow in the last days. And second kind of darkness is all this blindness. Blindness. Interesting, right? That's what will happen before the end. And Jesus added all the details, speaking about wars and rumor of wars and fear. <clears throat> you know, severe fear will, will, will grab the hearts of people. We're going to see that. And it's already happening. It's already happening. It's going to grow. But as darkness grows, as darkness growing deeper and deeper and taking over nations and people and governments, that's what the Bible says will happen to us. It says, but, I love it, but, can you say to your friend, but, in Hebrew it says, aval, well, I love but, it sounds stronger, right? But, the Lord shall arise upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the way, in Hebrew, when it says Lord in English, in 99% of the scriptures, when it says Lord in your Bible, in the original language, it says Yehovah or Jehovah, right? Yehovah. Yehovah means, well, it, it means actually past, present and future. I am Yehovah. I am past, present and future. There's already a big message right in just in that. 
But actually, Jesus introduced us to Jehovah, to Jehovah as God the Father. Okay, God the Father. So here it says God the Father. It says Jehovah, God the Father. So it says, but the God the Father, so God himself will be involved. Not only Jesus, praise Lord, you know, he's great, he's wonderful. And, and not only angels and archangels, but even God the Father will be involved. And by the way, you know, in the last days, before the rapture, it says, God himself, Ephesians say, uh, no, Thessalonians says, God the Father himself, and even in the English Bible it says, God the Father, God, it says, not Jesus, but God will take the shofar, the horn, the shofar, and he will blow the shofar. And uh, no, Jesus will give sign, uh, God the Father will blow the shofar, and all these events will take place. Hallelujah. So, so actually, God has his own shofar. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's amazing, right? But that's what's written in the New Testament. Praise God. But anyway, God the Father will arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's the message of the Bible. Arise and shine. Be glory. Be, be ready. Be ready. Darkness is going to come. It's going to be bad. It's going to be evil. It's going to be ugly. But it will be glorious because, you know, as darker darkness is, the brighter light in that darkness, right? The, bl- the brighter is light. Hallelujah. So we get ready. We need to be ready for two things. We need to be ready for darkness. And, and I know some people get crazy. You know, I remember COVID. I mean, we've all been suffering, we've all been talking, but some people get crazy, you know, become, get too much attention to, and too much credit to COVID and all of that, you know. So we have to be ready. Shaking it will happen. More and more and more. I remember, you know, coming out of COVID. We just came out of COVID. And in my church, I have many uh, Ukrainians who just, you know, who immigrated, Jewish people who immigrated from Ukraine to, to Israel and joined my church. I remember, I remember one businessman who came from Ukraine. Uh, when COVID happened, he was a fighter. He always been fighting against COVID, talking, you know, talking all the time. And, and then war broke out, Russia-Ukraine war broke out. I, I'm going out of the worship to the lobby. I sit in him, he sitting with the head down, because his family actually right there, were right there at the war zone. He's sitting down with his head down and just shaking his head. He kind of talking to himself. He forgot that he's around people around him, but he was like, so like, like uh, uh, his name, Lubas. Lubas, what's up? He goes like, Pastor Israel, during the COVID, I thought, uh, I had such a difficult time. I thought nothing uh, worse than that can ever happen to me. But I said, and now it's nothing compared to what my family faced now in Ukraine, you know. And uh, that's welcome to the world, right? Welcome to the reality. There will be shaking it, shaking it, and shaking it more and more and more. But God is speaking. In the midst of that, in the midst of that, God is going to move, going to show his glory, going to show his power. And we see that already. You know, one of the messages I have in my life, in my heart, actually, lessons learned. You know, what happened in Israel, why it happened, but also what changed. There is lots and lots of good stuff, really good stuff happened with that. And today I'm not going to speak about that. I have no time. But God is moving. In the midst of darkness, God is releasing his light. Hallelujah. And I can, as, as I told you, when I was moving to Ashdod to start a church, and when I started to feel I'm going to face persecutions, and actually we faced seven years of the heaviest persecutions any church faced in Israel ever. But out of it, glory comes. We become one of the biggest congregations. We got open doors to evangelize thousands and thousands of Israelis. We've we been speaking uh, through media and all of that. It was amazing, amazing times. Difficult, yet glorious. And when I was going through, if you ask me, uh, I, if you ask me, would you like to have a break and stop these persecutions? I would say, yes, please. I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it. I complained to the Lord. Sometimes I even complained to the Lord. I didn't like it. But coming, when we get through persecutions, when we get out of persecutions, and we look back and we see what God has done for us, with us, inside of us, and, and through us, no regrets. And today, I will choose the same path. In the beginning, I remember saying to the Lord, why me, Lord? Why me? We are young, we are small, we are, you know, why me, Lord? When, when it's over, 
We say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. We need it. We need it. This makes us stronger. It's built our faith. God did so many miracles. And he blessed us with the building. And you know, Pastor Dennis, how it's, it, very few churches have buildings in, in Israel, you know. Lots, lots of all kinds of miracles. Hallelujah. Think about your life. When you're going to come or coming, if you're coming through any crisis, any attacks, most likely they are spiritual. Even if it's conflict in your workplace, some conflict in your family, something happening to kids, you know, family, husband, wife. Wake up. <laughs> Time to pray. Time to pray. There is spiritual attacks behind it. There is demonic demons behind it, okay? We should receive time to time wake-up calls, right? So we're going to face all kinds of problems. The doctor reports about health, all kinds of attacks. The finances, all kinds of attacks. But God is going to show his glory in the middle of all these bad reports, all of these attacks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because he promised, right? Because he promised. And that's what we see in Israel. We see with Israel, and it's not the end yet. Israel is still facing struggles, and it's diffi the most difficult time and military conflict ever Israel had ever. And we see, all, most of the people see all the reports uh, about destruction in Gaza, but they don't show what happened to Israel, you know, like, and actually Israel fighting for survival right now. But we have the Bible, so that's okay. Israel will survive. God is, God, God, is, God is faithful, you know. But also many, many things. But also it's like judgment over nations because many nations, many people taking their stand, you know, like making decisions. It's a judgment. It's a judgment. Many kill curse upon themselves. But good po point about curses. When people get deeper into curses and demonic because hatred, open hearts for many demons, then they will need help. And who will help them? Jesus. Jesus. And you, church of God. Yeah, your church and others. Hallelujah. So we're going to have many clients very soon, brother. <laughs> yes, even darkness. Even darkness eventually serves the Lord. In a way, serves the Lord, right? I mean, God uses even darkness. All the battles, all the struggles, all the pain, all the problems. God is using for his glory. Hallelujah. And I can see how these young people will mess up because they take a step of, to, into very dangerous place, right? Anti-Semitism, standing, standing against people of God, very dangerous. What they do, they invite curse into their lives, but when curse come, it's painful, it's ugly, it's demonic, there is demons, you know? And then Jesus will show up Amen. to help them, to rescue them, you know, and he turn around these things, hallelujah. And uh, we know the stories, right? We know many stories. I have friends, I have friends who have been born and raised hating Israel, hating Israel. And then they get saved, and they become best friends of Israel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because they understood truth. And they understood, yes, Israel is not perfect. And you would never, when you come to Israel, no one will ever tell you, oh, it's perfect country. You know, never. Actually, Israel always, Israelis always complain about our own country, our own government, about everything that's part of Israel. Nothing changed in thousands of years. From the stories of the Exodus to, to today, nothing changed. That's okay, praise the Lord. But uh, God is going to show his glory. Now for closing, I want to short, read you a couple of scriptures, very important scriptures. Uh, Zechariah 12. Prophetic scripture for today, for what happened now, already happening right now. So you see some prophecies, they're just certain short-time events, and some prophecies, it's like a season. Things are happening through the season, through the decades, you know. So Zechariah 12, verse 2 says here, behold, God speaks, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling into all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all people. And those who will, uh, I, I read translation, I, I remember I was preaching in one church in uh, Cyprus, and they asked me, use only King James, old King James translation, right? So I read, and I see like, oh, it's not translation I used to, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just King James. Yeah. Normally I use New King James in England, but anyway. Uh, anyway, so verse 2, God is saying, behold, get ready, get ready, it's going to happen. God will make Jerusalem cup of drunkenness, or or cup of trembling. In Hebrew, it says, it says cup of ra'al. Now, ra'al means poison. 
So it's not even drunkenness, it's a poison. And you know, in old days when kings uh, have been drinking, you know, wine or whatever they would drink, they, would, they took their golden cups, you know, with the, with the precious, sto precious stones, you know, cups, they will do toast and they will raise it up. That everyone will see that, right? Because it's a representative, representative of glory, you know. They will raise cups and do all these toasts, you know. God said, I'm going to raise Jerusalem very high. Everyone will see it. Everyone will see it. It's a small, tiny nation, but all the world will be busy watching it, see it, talking about it, thinking about it, condemning it, stands against, against it, or pray for it, you know. Cup of poisoning. So God is raising Jerusalem as cup of poisoning, and many people will try to drink it. They will drink it. Uh, but actually, in Hebrew, it says poison. <clears throat> Not just drunkenness, but poison. And you know, if you drink poison, you know what's going to happen to person, to nations, you know, to people, to groups of people. Interesting, right? But God is not afraid. You know, like Psalm 2 says, why nations rise against, against Israel and against anointed one? Why nations making plot, you know, to destroy Israel? And then it says, God, what God will do? It says, God will laugh. Crazy, right? God will laugh. They're making plots and plans that they want to destroy, they want to stop, but it says, God will laugh. I think when you pray for Israel next time, Pastor Dennis, please try it. Just laugh. Because <laughs> God, God is laughing. He see, he see all these nonsenses, he's just laughing. I know it feels scary sometimes. Whoa, where's, where, when is going to, well, how is it going to end? What's going to be next? I know it feels scary, but God is under control. Amen. God keep it under control and is laughing. That's what Psalm says. He will laugh. Hallelujah. We need laugh and revival again, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Praise the Lord. But then it says, and God will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone and nations will try to remove it. They will try to remove it, but it says they will stumble on it. They will fall on it and they will be cut in pieces. So uh, that's a warning, right? It's a prophetic warning. That's going to happen. And we already see that. You know, we already see that. You know, Israel is a tiny little nation. But attention Israel got is unproportional. <clears throat> there are voices, you know, my Arab friends are saying, you know, when Syrian war happened some years ago, you know, some years ago, half a million Muslims were killed. Children, women, half a million. There were no riots. I mean, there were some news reports, yes, there were some news reports for sure, for a short sure time, and then word forgot about it. Half a million children, women, much more children and women than even men, no one cares, right? Just behind the border, they are our neighbors, just behind the border, if you have terrorist attack, a couple people died, all the world will speak about that. You know, what, how many criminals killing each other in, here in London? We don't know. But if a couple of people died in Israel, in Jerusalem, all the world speaks about it, right? It doesn't make sense. It does, but it's what happened. I remember I had the Pastor Stavros uh, Ignatio from Greece came to visit me when Greece had riots. I remember he said, like, I want to see you. you can I speak your TV? I want to see what happens uh, in Greece right now. He opened up his TV and he see reports. All this BBC, CNN, all the news were speaking about a few Palestinian boys throwing stones on, on Israelis and they kind of trying to arrest them. And all the news, every half an hour, speaks about that. And at that day, there were big riots in Athens when, you know, people were killed, stores were burned. It was reported in, in Greece, but no one spoke about it internationally. Interesting, right? And by the way, in the same day, there were actually fights in Syria. 200 people died in the same day, no reports. But, but guys get bored, throwing stones. All, 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 world, all the world speaks about it. It's amazing, right? But it's a preparation. All the world watches over Israel for good and bad, right? For, to, to pray, to bless, or to curse and to stand against. But God is raising up Israel because he's going to reveal his glory. We've been reading in the, in the, in the first verse, Ezekiel 36. It's about his glory. His glory will be revealed in Israel and all the world will see. Jesus, Jesus will come to rule in Israel, in Jerusalem, and all the world will see. So we see the connection. It's a spiritual connection. 
And last scripture for tonight, and let's pray. I feel like time to pray. I will add a few words, but uh, well, right now, we see hunger is growing in Israel. The openness for the gospel is growing in Israel. Uh, we just get evangelism. I share, I share with you, Pastor Dennis, evangelism in Galilee. It was amazing to see. 600 people came, or 650, I don't remember, and most of them stood up to pray to Jesus for Pentecost, for Shavuot, for Pentecost. We do another evangelism event in Jerusalem for 450 people, and people were already signing up. People want to come. People want to hear some words of hope. They want to hear about prophetic words of the Bible. They want to study. They want to hear. It's amazing, but God is moving and touching many hearts. So in the midst of darkness, there is light. In the midst of darkness, there is hope. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we see people opening up for gospel because people kind of losing hope. Like, what next? How much, how much conflicts we're going to have? How many... How many conflicts? How, how much war will continue? How much time it will continue? All these questions, and Jesus has the answers. Yeah. Because he given us peace, shalom, even in the midst of the war, right? In the midst of the conflicts, praise God. Hallelujah. So it's a wonderful time. It's difficult, but wonderful time. As a church, we see the blessing of God. We see the open doors. We see the opportunities to help people and to encourage people. You know, Bible said, Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to the heart of Jerusalem. You know, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 40. So, comfort, comfort my people. We really see that. The spirit of comfort coming down on everyone who comes to Israel to share the gospel, to be there just to stand the people of Israel. The spirit of comfort coming over people. And uh, Israel needs lots of comfort right now. You know, the prophetic words are clear and very powerful. And that's why, actually, Jesus said, you know, the spirit, the spirit of the Lord up, uh, on me because he's anointed me to heal, right, the wounded, the broken, right? Praise the Lord. So the spirit of comfort is coming down. Hallelujah. So uh, pray comfort over Israel. Come and be the voice of the Holy Spirit to comfort people, and you will come back, and you will see this compassion, this spirit of spiritual comfort will come over your life, and when you will share the gospel, the response will be even greater. Hallelujah. But that's the movement of God. God is moving. We will continue to update you, and I know you're praying for us. Thank you, Pastor Dennis, for many years. Please keep praying for us. We need prayers, but it's a really glorious time. Once again, difficult, dark. You know, October 7, we literally felt how darkness broke loose from Gaza uh, over Israel. It was physically, tangibly, we felt it tangibly. It was amazing, but cha nation changed in one day. But you know what? Like I told you lessons learned, just one thing. October 6th, day before, Israel was at the deepest point of division inside of Israel. And division was growing stronger and stronger. And it wasn't just political disagreements. Normally, it used to be political disagreements, but it's grown to hatred, brothers uh, being hating each other. People be being ugly. They, we never have seen people on TV, almost cursing on TV, you know, speaking about political opponents. It was growing bad and ugly, and division was deep. And even there were voices in Israel. Some politicians would say, what's going to be next? Are we going to see civil war? Literally, it was like 50-50, the country divided. October 6, it was the most difficult day in history of Israel, speaking of inner division between brothers, between families. Deep, deep division. I know division is bad, it's ugly. <clears throat> From, uh, after division, the hatred comes, and it's self-destruction, right? So Israel was walking on the way of self-destruction. It was very difficult, very dangerous. We, we've been praying a lot. It was really bad. And you, could, you probably have seen all these reports from Israel about riots. Well, they're peaceful compared to many other places. No, no, no uh, stores are broken, no cars are burned. But it was really uh, hundreds of thousands of people would come out to protest the government. You know? It was really, but it was 50-50. I mean, really, like deep division. Division was growing, growing, growing. And by the way, that's the, that's the tool of enemy. And you know, enemy tried to bring division into the churches, into the families. Because you know, he divided the house. How is not strong anymore? They will be busy with themselves, you know, fighting each other instead of fighting devil, instead of fighting demons, you know. So division is very dangerous. There is many problems, many attacks, many dangerous things, but I think for the church, division is one of the most dangerous, dangerous things. And through that, devil actually taking our attention from God and real enemy just to each other, right? So uh, watch out. 
if you, you, it's okay to disagree, okay to have different opinions, even okay to go to different church, you know, <laughs> to try to check whatever. But division is deadly. It's deadly. It's an open door for demons, you know, for, for, for demonic powers. It's really, it's really bad. And that's what, what Israel was going through. So October 6th, day before attack, Israel was at the lowest point of deep division and brothers' hatred. October 7th was very dark and very bad. I told you, darkness just lose physical darkness. I don't know if you see all these images of uh, killing children, women face to face, not just caught in fire, but face to face, and all this, all this terrible stuff that happened. But, but, Israel turned around and became united in one day. Total unity in one day. People put behind all the disagreements, all the political, different political views, and they said, we are brothers, we've been fighting each other, and enemy have seen it as a sign of weakness, and sign to, it's time to attack, it's, we are guilty. And to see on TV, right and left wing coming together, and saying like, I'm sorry, I spoke last time I spoke on interview with you, I was bad, sorry, so no, 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 I'm sorry. I shouldn't speak the way I spoke to you, and it was so much of forgiveness. It was amazing movement, hallelujah. And second movement was prayer. People prayed, lots of people prayed. We have crazy stories as one guy hiding in the bushes and see terrorists around, calling to police, it was on Israeli TV, main Israeli TV, you know. So many reports about prayers, so many reports about prayers. You're calling police, like, please can, 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 can come and help me. And police officer on the other side said, sir, we cannot help you. There's, there, there's lots of problems everywhere, we cannot help you. So what do you mean you cannot help me? You're the, you're the police, send army. Come and help me, come and rescue me. Say, sir, we cannot help you. So what shall I do? And the officer says, sir, you need to pray. He goes like, you are the police officer, and, you, and your answer to me, official answer to me, pray? Say, yes, sir, pray. And he was speaking about that on TV, you know, like, and the left wing TV, you know, and TV said, and the TV reporter said, and what did you do? He said, and I pray like crazy. <laughs> He said, I didn't pray for my bar mitzvah time, 13 years old, you know, when they make me to pray. I didn't believe in God, but they make me to pray, you know. Since then, I didn't ever pray. I prayed like crazy. He said, by the way, since then, I pray every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, and there are so many wonderful stories of prayers, how people turn to God, pray to God. God did miracles. Like one a friend of mine lived by the Gaza border in kibbutz, got sent 20 years ago to live in kibbutz. It was kind of, all of us thought it strange. But now, only now, 20 years later, it makes sense. Because they, they lived in isolation from believers. They need to drive like at least 40 minutes to close the city and then more to the church, to all this church, you know. It's like, why you do that? You disconnect yourself from the, you know. But she's, the, the, the lady was prayer prayer warrior. She said, I felt God is calling us to be there. God is calling us to be there. So Nachal Os, Kibbutz Nachal Os, right on the Gaza border. Kibbutz was attacked, but I believe because of her prayer, she did two things great. She came to her bomb shelter, locked the door with her husband, with her husband. She prayed, but also she texted to every Christian, and she know Christians in different nations, to send text messages to every Israeli Christian, every international Christians, all over. Pray for us, pray for us, when they're under attack, pray for us. And people started to pray. Everywhere people started to pray. So a miracle happened. Terrorist, I have video. She sent me video footages. If you, if you want to see that or show your church, uh, remind me, I will send you videos from their home cameras. Two terrorists broke into her house, two terrorists with Kalashnikov guns, and they spent two hours in their home, and they're, they just in the bomb shelter room, just normal door, it's a, it's a thick door, but it's easy to break through this door, you know? And this door have not even locker. Not even, can, so, so husband was standing by the door holding the, holding the handle and uh, almost fading, you know, because they hear the, the terrorists walking in the house. But you know what happened? They spent in her house two hours. She, she prayed all these two hours, prayed in the spirit, proclaimed greatness of God, and they see, and husband standing with the phone, see the camera, see terrorists coming to the door. Turn around, and he, he went there. Come back, turn around, went there for two hours. Dozens of times, they came to the door, and they never even tried to touch the handle. They would come to the door, close door, turn around. They turn, they open everything in the house. They've been taking food and money and documents, everything. They turn the house around, 
but they never touch even the handle of the door. They would come, and I believe God made them blind. There is no explanation. They didn't see that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a powerful testimony, right? There is lots, lots of glorious testimonies. Hallelujah. And you know, one of the, by the way, about the young generation, one of the testimonies, you know, in, the, in that day, so many young people uh, stood up and went to Gaza area to, to rescue people and lay their lives. And many of them, they knew they're, going to, they're most likely they're going to die, they're going to be killed, but they've been going back and forth, back and forth, rescue people without nothing, without guns, just rescuing people. And some people just took, took their pistols, you know, like and facing 30 terrorists with the machine guns and RPGs, you know, and uh, they rescued their life, you know, to save others. And I remember I was watching one of the politicians, also uh, one of the ex-generals, and he said, I have to confess, on left-wing Israeli TV, you know, like, uh, as you're here, he said, I have to confess. Thinking of this young generation, the TikTok, you call them TikTok generation, really if I say that, TikTok generation. He said, I was wondering, and actually I was wondering what's going to be future like. I thought this generation is lazy, they're selfish, they only like, like, like pleasures, but when disaster happened, when attack happened, they rose up and become heroes. They laid, laid their lives to rescue others. So there is hope for the next generation. There is hope for TikTok generation. There is hope for So I believe we will see when the hour will come and many young people, looks like you don't know what, what happened with them, what, what, what they, where is their heart. When the moment will come, the Holy Spirit will come over and they become heroes for God, for Jesus, for his kingdom, the missionaries, the evangelists, right? The servants of God. Hallelujah. So keep praying. Don't lose hope. Keep praying. Keep praying for them. Keep praying for them. Hallelujah. So let's read last scripture. That's about you. That's commission for you, for your church. Isaiah 62 says, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent. And give him no rest until he establishes and till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Hallelujah. So here's a call. Here is a call. God said, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. It's a call of God to become a watchman, and it, God speaks about prayer. What does watchman do? Watchman, it's a people with a good sight, spiritually with the prophetic sight. People who can see in the spirit, men and women of God, young and old, who can see in the spirit. And you know the role of watchmen to stay on the walls and to see what's coming, what's coming, what's, what's approaching the city. You know, if it's trade and you know all this, uh, all these caravans or camels bringing goods to the ancient city of Jerusalem. Good news, Hallelujah! You know the the, the business is growing. Or if there is enemy coming to Jerusalem. They need to warn a city, right? To blow the shofars, to blow the hordes, and let people, let city know, time to fight, time to close the doors, time to fight, time to fight. So that's a picture for a watchman. I believe Isaiah speaks about spiritual warfare and about spiritual warriors, spiritual soldiers, soldiers of God, hallelujah. On your walls, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their shalom, peace, day or night. Interesting, right? Day and night. Hallelujah. Who, you mention, who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. And love your seven. And give him, give God, no rest until, okay? Give him no rest until certain time. Until he establishes and until he makes Jerusalem praise in the earth. Hallelujah. Glory is coming. His praise is coming. His glory is coming down to Jerusalem, to all earth. Hallelujah. And that's our part, to go up in the spirit on the walls of Jerusalem. Next time you come to Israel, talk to me. I will help you. I will explain you how to walk on the physical walls of Jerusalem. It's cool, really cool. I love it. Walk on the physical walls of Jerusalem is really cool. But it's an invitation for all nations 
to walk on the walls of Jerusalem, and you know what will happen. It's an invitation to the spiritual warfare, invitation to be a watchman, <clears throat> to intercede for revival against the enemy, but also for revival, for all the God's blessings, hallelujah. And you know, when you pray for Jerusalem, if you take time to pray for Jerusalem, to pray according to the Bible, you know what you will see? Other nations will come to your spirit. Yeah. God will use you for also many other things because that's the key. That's the key. Hallelujah. So let's stand up together and let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let me pray for you and your church because you are standing here in England in these crazy times as a beacon of light. Light of Jesus, hallelujah, standing on the word of God. And you have an important role to play. And you know, God take even small churches and shaking nations through the small churches. I know you're not a small church, but I'm saying you don't have to be very great to make a difference. You don't have to be very big in numbers to bring changes. But your prayers are matter. Your faith are matter. Your stand are matter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, please. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just really feel <coughs> the prophetic, uh, prophetic atmosphere here. Sense of destiny. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See you, Lama Shita Daba Sataya. Oh, Rababa Sekitianda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Oh, I can see in the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is touching many hearts. Some of you feel it. And some of you don't feel it right now. But it's touching many hearts and preparing you for next level, for next steps. Oh, hallelujah. Shita baba baba yanda. I see in the spirit there is invitation to walk in more supernatural. Supernatural. Supernatural of God. Oh, rabba basi titi. I see many, some of you here who haven't been laying hands outside of church on non-believers, offer them prayer for quite a few time, quite a time. But now, I see in the Spirit, you are talking to your co-worker. You are talking to your neighbor. You are talking in some public place and saying, hmm, okay, let me pray for you. Let me just pray for you. Let me pray for you. And I see you laying hands on them, and God is doing miracles, changing their situation. I see, like, especially... The key, key to intercede for some relatives, those who are sick, those who, are, those who are suffer, those who are going through difficult times and offer prayer, not only for them, but also for their relatives, the husband, the wife, the children, the mama. Hallelujah. Oh, I see like this movement of prayer in just common, normal situations, movement of prayer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we pray. I feel like you respond. I feel like you're ready. You want to see that in your life. You want to see glory through your prayers. So I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray all together, Lord. Yes, take us. Use us. Send people our way. Send people our way. Create in our life situations when it can offer prayer. Just simple prayer for their situation, for their struggles, for their hopelessness, Lord. Just simple prayer, Lord. And to see God move. And to see God move, to see God using your prayers. Oh, Rabba Basakatiyanda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Sitiyanda. Hallelujah. I also see some, some people here. There's some people here that you receive vision from God, you receive clear directions from God, but nothing happened and you've been waiting for a long time. And now you're doubting is it really Lord or? Is it really can happen? So, you had these prophetic words. You, had, you received these confirmations. But it never came to fullness. It never happened. So, Holy Spirit here to remind you those prophecies, those encounters with the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit spoke to you, and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. It's not too late. No. It's not too late. He's faithful. Keep waiting. Keep praying. Don't lose your hope. No. It will happen. It will happen. Whatever he showed you, he spoke to you with confirmations, it will happen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we're taking back this vision, the lost vision, or, or vision that get out of our focus. Lord, help us to get back to focus and faith and prayers on the vision you gave us, Lord. Passion you gave us. Call you gave us, Lord. Spiritual gifts you gave us, Lord. Hallelujah. Ho rabasata bashititi. Ho rabasakata bababashiyanda. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And especially I hear a word. I hear again word. Dreams and visions. Dreams and visions. I feel like this church is going to have great experience. God is going to visit you in the night times. He's going to wake, some of you going to, he going to wake up three in the morning, four in the morning, two in the morning, five in the morning. Don't be frustrated. It's the Holy Spirit. It's invitation. If you wake, wake up next time, two in the morning, three in the morning, just say, here I am, Lord, and pray in the Spirit. Jesus. Pray in the Spirit. Jesus. And he will take you to the, on the walls of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Pray in the Spirit. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord, we pray. We pray, Lord, according to what you have shown before the service, I pray, Lord, that you visit many of your people here, Lord, in the nights, hallelujah, in the dreams, hallelujah, show them dreams, Lord, colorful, colorful, prophetic dreams in the name of Jesus, clear dreams, prophetic dreams in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you want to see prophetic dreams and say, yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Prophetic words, yes. but also prophetic dreams. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For this wonderful journey into prophetic dreams. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Rabba Satala Bashidianda. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Kira Barala Sivianda. Kiri Bidi 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 Yanda. Hallelujah, Shua. Hallelujah. And before I will call Pastor Dennis to pray for Israel, pray for us, pray for Israel, I also want to pray for sick, and I'm not going to call you up, but let's just pray for each other. Bible, Bible said, pray for each other to be healed. So if you, if you have any pain, any sickness, in your body, can you raise your hand? Just gently raise your hand. Okay, it's you. almost most of us. Okay, so now open your eyes and see people. Keep your hand up, but also see people around you. If you see any person with a hand up, lay your hand on his shoulder. If it's you and him and her, hold your hands or lay your whatever appropriate. Yeah, put your hand on his her shoulder. shoulder. Yeah, so we're all covered, right? All covered. Hallelujah. All covered. Wonderful. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for power of the Holy Spirit in this place, spiritual gifts and promises. <clears throat> Lord, you said by the wounds of Jesus we were healed. Hallelujah. So, Lord, you said pray for each other to be healed. Hallelujah. Lord, we lay hands on each other. Pastor Dennis, come. We lay hands on each other. We lay hands on each other in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray for supernatural healing. Healing. Restoration. Healing in the name of Jesus. Supernatural healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. We pray that all the pain must go. All the sickness must go. All the medical conditions must be just go, be healed in the name of Jesus the tumors out in the name of Jesus out in the name of Jesus oh the heart problems have to be fixed right now in the name of Jesus joints healing in the name of Jesus the back pain the healing in the name of Jesus yes 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 Oh, Baba 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 Baba
As you use the circumstances and negative circumstances to bring them together, Father, to realize their wealth, to realize their need, to realize, oh God, that they are bigger than the problem. We seek and praise you. Oh, Rabba the God of Israel, Lord, we pray over the fellowship in Ashdod. We thank you, Father. We lift up, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. We lift up Israel's sons. We lift up his wife. We lift up that congregation. We lift up the work right now, Father. We assign ourselves to your mandate, Father. Because you are piercing the darkness. You are piercing the darkness. You are piercing in the darkness, we bring every cell, every believer, oh Lord, in the land. Supernatural intervention, dreams and visions. Signs and wonders. Oh God, we bring every pastor, we bring every shepherd, we bring every elder, we bring every Lord God member of the body of Christ. Your army is rising up. Your army is rising up, Father. Your army is rising up. We hear the sound of the army of God. Oh, Glory, 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 glory. Father, your servant will return to Israel like a cloud for the rain. We thank you for your anointing upon Israel, God. But he will go back, Father God, to trample on scorpions and serpents. We bring every IDF soldier, oh Lord, right now. We pray for dreams and visions. We pray for an awakening. In this spirit, oh Lord, they will hear the trumpet sound. We thank you, Father. You are going to multiply that 650 people to thousands, oh Lord. Thousands. You will put food on the table. They will eat the natural food and they will eat from the bread of life. Oh, last second, Mickey. Strengthen your body, O oh Lord. Breathe. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. She prays. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let's take a break. It's a problem. She pray in the bossy bay. Oh, Riandala Baisiki. Hallelujah. 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 Ziki Branda Laboria Seba and Nadodori. As we stand tonight, as Israel was speaking, you know, there's something about the anointing 
and the anointing is experiential. And you can't take anyone any further than you've been before. And I remember always I came up to your church, Ashton. And when you began to think about the seven years, God used you in a very special way. When you thought it was, he showed you Ashdod, you was excited about Ashdod and what he was going to do. He showed you the end result, but he didn't show you what was in between. But those seven years were seven years of, that came, had to come to a point of completion to make you ready for now. You think about in the midst of war, 600 and odd people coming in the midst of war and receiving from the Lord. And I began to think that your very presence being here, we see you on the screen, we see you and we pray for you, but your very presence walking into this place is sending ripples right now into all of our lives. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I was telling some people last night, it's not about what people do, it's about what they are and who they are and who you are, your very presence carries an anointing because you've come through that season. And this is a verse that I love, but it just came back to me when you were speaking. Put it out for me, Isaiah 30, 18. Put it in the New King James, Isaiah 30, 18. And I thought about the, the whole thing of what happened to Israel before. They're God's chosen people, but they were off. But then God speaks and he says this, and, and it's amazing that if they re, when they respond to what he says, you see what happens to all the idols. It's, it's, there's a problem, it crashed our, our system. But in, I have my King James version, but in the new King James, if, if it can go up, I guess he's working this, but it says, and therefore, and this is in King James, therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. Let's read together. Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore, he will be exhorted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. Isn't it amazing that when you were speaking, that would just come back to my mind again. Listen, the Lord himself said, because of my promises, and you, you emphasize that so much, Israel, tonight, and that's where the emphasis needs to be. It's not about the, the people. It's not about land. It's actually about him. And he said, because of what I have said, and for my own sake, I'm going to wait on you, even though you are off. I'm going to wait. And it's not just actually wait, because in Kova, it means that one there in the Hebrew, I know it's Kova, it means to serve. So I'm going to keep serving you until something happens inside of you. And as I'm serving you, that you may understand my grace. And grace is the elevator that lifts us up to meet the demands of truth that's in every scripture. And therefore, he will be exalted. When that grace gets under us, and we know, and you said it, and I thank God that you are a physical person living in Israel, facing that situation, and God will let you get on a plane to come over here to be in our prayer meeting. We are very grateful to God. Amen. And that you would have a desire, and the Lord is waiting to be gracious. Amen. Everything about this is about his grace. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him, all those who are willing to serve him. And I just, Israel, and my precious brother, I thank God for you. And we thank God for all those that have come to know Yeshua in the land. And we're thanking God for all those who have been primed and ready to receive Yeshua. And, and God, can you take me a little couple of verses? Because I, when you were speaking, and, and we know and we see the idolatry, Go to verse 19 if, if it's possible. Or do you have to find it, Clint? Okay. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. When you were speaking, that, that came back to me. That, that just the, Israel, that's so powerful. On the day before, it was so divided in darkness. And on the day that trouble came, it all came together. So we must not, a lot of things we try to pray away. Not when problems come, we try to pray them away. But it's, <laughs> it's in our ashes we find our fire. And it's in our misery we find our ministry. 
verse, verse, next verse. We're just going to agree this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba. You are so good. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your... Oh, listen to me. I just love Jesus. Didn't say because the devil. <laughs> Didn't say because the devil brought adversity. Are you hearing me? The Lord allows these to happen, things to happen. And Israel, you probably would not have been in this building tonight had not the whole situation taken place in Israel. We've known each other for years. But look what's brought in the midst of adversity. Eh? And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore. I've never said this in the church before. I'll say it tonight in this prayer meeting because something happened to me. I've never ever said this before. But tonight we agree that the teachers will no longer be in the corner anymore. I believe the event in Israel, God is going to release from Israel evangelists to the whole world. Just like in the early church, we are now heading towards Pentecost and it took your being here for me to understand. This has just hit me when I was sitting there. Water affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Are you hearing me? And, I, and just like where you're standing here, you know, we, we, we in the West, we've used it. I've done it so many times. And we preached it in, in the last day, you know, the, 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 the hearts of the children, sons, children will be turned to the fathers and the, and the hearts of the fathers turn to, to the children. And we think about our own children, but the fathers are Israel, the patriots. We'll be, we'll be turned back to what God had assigned. That's the teachers. Amen. Now look what happens next verse. We're in a prayer meeting. I never came in here with any plan to say this, but I just heard this as he was speaking. Listen, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Go to the next 22, please. I'll finish on 22. You will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornaments of your molded images of gold. You will throw them away as an unclean thing. You will say to them, get away. Hallelujah. Get away. Get away. We're going to agree right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In Israel, we are going to see a great breakthrough. You keep going, brother. You're the arrowhead. You've got a shaft here. There are people all around the world, but also here right now too. It's going to, it's going to spread all the idols that have been in the hearts of those who are meant to be following God. We're going to see them as a dirty thing. I won't even say what it says. Well, I will say what it says in the King James. It says a menstruation clock. There you go. Come and tell them. You need to hear yeah, that say in, it, in Hebrew. Come, you say it, brother, because they better hear well, it from you. Oh, oh, I you have a mic okay. now. Yeah. In Hebrew, uh, uh, silver, kesef, and in modern Hebrew, we call the money kesef. You know? So it's about money, also money. Idols, money, Idols. gold. So we may turn around and say that, you know, like, you know, like well, you know, I, I haven't got no idol or whatever, but for many people, even giving time to God, their job has become their God. When you're working, and I used to always say, I don't say it so much now, but you know, everything in life is done by the rate of exchange. So if you're working on a day that you should be honoring God, the money you make for that day, you, it's not God. You're, you're robbing God. Because just like when you breathe out, you have to breathe in. Everything is done by the rate of exchange. If I work 40 hours a week and I get paid for it, the money that I get paid is a representation of my life. It's not just money to go and you go and buy stuff, you're spending your life. And we declare right now in the name that's above every name, we'll say, get away. Come on, if you mean business with God, you raise your hands right now and start saying, Father, I wanna have that kind of mindset to be able to say, get away. All those things, Father, that are unclean. We will see them as unclean and we will say, get away. Get away in the name of Jesus. Because Lord, it will all go up in ashes. It will all go up in the fire. But Lord God, we want that which cannot be destroyed by fire. We want that that will be purified by fire. We say get away in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba. 
Thank you, Abba. Now I want you to stretch your hands towards Israel and our precious brother here also is working also in Israel. And I'm not going to tell you what to pray. We're a, we're a church that pray for Israel as the Holy Spirit leads you right now. Let's begin to pray right now. I had a picture when, when, I, when I was come, just coming up that Israel will go back to Israel like a cloud full of rain. Something is going to happen through us just coming right now and praying. We're not going to limit it to words. The effectual heartfelt prayers of righteous men and women avails much. Let that sound go forth tonight as we are in our appreciation to God. Oh God, you brought him in to take him out, Father. Begin to pray right now. Oh. Thank you, oh Father God. Yee. Oh, the ministry shibik. Kambrodi sibriketara. Nimanduro bokisha. Hallelujah. We're going to pick up a love offering right now. Everything that's picked up tonight is going straight to go to the work that Israel is doing. Amen. 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 We want to see, and we want to, <laughs> hallelujah. God spoke it. We've got to do our part, amen, and see it happen. We're going to see many souls come into the Lord. Provision made in Jesus' name. Father, we want to thank and praise you. What can we give to you which you didn't first give to us? We thank and praise you, Lord God, for what we've received tonight, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your servant, Lord, has just flown over, just been here these two days, Lord God, and even as they should travel back, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for living witnesses who are holding on to your word. And as it were, come over, as it were, to Lord God, encourage us. Iron sharpens iron. And we thank you, Father God, for what we've received tonight. And Lord, we want to pray and, and declare a blessing over what we will give, which you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's sing. You can sit, you can stand, whatever, but let's just glorify God in our giving. He loves a, a cheerful giver. We'll give it with a cheerful heart. Amen.
So Father, we want to thank and praise you so much, Lord, for being so gracious to us. Thank you for reminding us tonight, Lord, of your thoughts and your plans for us, Lord. Thoughts of peace and of hope to give us a future and expect it in. We pray, Lord God, that this will go beyond our heads, but deep into our hearts. We pray that the truth, as we agree over it, Lord God, tonight will be established. And we thank you that you've gone before us. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you are the I am. You are the I am. And whatever we need, you are the I am. We pray for traveling mercies, for those who have to travel distances, everyone who's traveling have to travel from here, Father. We thank you for your promise that you said you'll bless our going out and our coming in. We want to bring our precious Pastor Israel and Pastor Ethan, Lord God, as they will travel back to the homeland. We thank you, Lord. We thank you so much. In spite of all that's gone on there, you put, put us on their hearts and we thank you, Father God. May we keep them in our hearts. In prayer, we pray. So we commend ourselves, Lord God, to the word that we receive and the grace of God that will lead us on from day to day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Greet each other. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor.